Hey everybody, welcome to the Sea Otter Classic up in Monterey, Laguna Seca Raceway. It is a beautiful day out here. Uh, we're so lucky because up here the weather can either be good or bad and today it's beautiful, it's perfect. And we're going to start off our little tour of the Sea Otter today at the Sage Titanium Bike Booth uh, where there's this little island, this little trio, a triumvirate of t beautiful titanium bikes that Dave Rosen, who is the mastermind behind Sage, he's going to talk us through them. Dave, take it away. How you doing? Thanks, Zap. Appreciate it. Um, let's start off with our polished Barlow over here. Uh, so this is our uh, Barlow gravel bike. Uh, it's kind of more of a uh, gravel race bike focused on uh, gravel racing like SBT, Belgian waffle ride, that sort of stuff. Um, kind of an endurance geometry, uh, still road bike-esque uh, in, uh, in, in terms of its fit and its function, but it does clear up to 700 by 40 millimeter tires, uh, so it can do a, a variety of terrain. Uh, this particular bike uh, actually has a uh, hand-polished finish. The frame is completely polished from front to back. Uh, we've also anodized in the seat stays the top tube and the other logos around the rest of the bike as well. Uh, even polish the bottle cages, the titanium seat post and the titanium seat post collar. Now just uh, for the sake of it, that's not a stock finish, right Dave? That is not a stock right. finish. And you told me once like the number, the hours or not even the cost, the cost was somewhat high. The, the number because of hours to polish the frame itself right. is 20 hours. Yeah. Um, the, it took me six hours to actually polish the bottle cages. The seat post collar was a lot easier, but the frame itself is 20 hours of polishing yeah. and it's just the detail work and the hand craftsmanship that goes into it yeah. is just, you Beautiful. get this mirror finish that yeah. just, as you can see, reflects the sun yeah. like no yeah. other. So yeah, super rad. Uh, and then yeah, finished off with, we've got a full NV suite of components, bar stem four, Chris King gold all around. So hence the gold theme going on there. And, and yeah, you might also note the uh, SRAM remote shifters. That's pretty cool up there for the, um, like the sprint shifters. Yeah, so we actually glued those on. So rather than the normal, you'd have a normal uh, rubber band yeah. that comes with the blips. Yeah. We actually glued them on, so it's super clean. So, That's cause nice. you get the Envy logo on the front. And we can't cover up the Envy logos. That's not cool, so. Yeah. What do we have over here on the side, Dave? So let's talk about this one over here is our actually our brand new launch for the show. Uh, this is the Storm King GP. Uh, GP actually stands for Gifford Pincho, despite what others might think it might mean. Um, and that's actually a forest in uh, southern Washington, pretty large national forest with uh, lots of um, uh, uh, lakes and streams and gravel and mountains and single track and the idea behind this was we basically took our, our Storm King gravel bike, which is kind of our monster gravel bike, and the idea was we knew suspension was going to be coming at some point or another, and we knew we wanted to push further and further into the backcountry. A lot of our customers are actually finding, um, are doing, you know, bikepacking expeditions or, you know, bigger gravel races like Unbound and that sort of thing, and so having a bike that can take a little bit of the sting out of some of that terrain is great. So we actually designed this bike specifically around the SRAM Explorer group. Uh, so you've got your Rudy Ultimate fork here, your Zip Explorer 101 wheels, uh, Zip Explorer uh, handlebar, uh, and then we've got a SRAM Red uh, Explore uh, rear derailleur and 1044 cassette, and then um, the, the RockShox Reverb Axis wireless dropper suspension post with 75 millimeters of, uh, drop. Of, of drop in it there. So it's a pretty rad bike. And yeah, this one, another custom finish as well. Uh, we actually fully anodized the frame. So it actually started out looking like the, the first frame we looked at. And we actually take this frame, dip it, pull it out, anodize it, and then we bead blasted the whole thing to get the artwork that we get. And just a little bit of Cerakote on the top tube. Uh, and this is actually a bike that we just tested in, uh, for Road Bike Action. Uh, it's like we had the exclusive first ride and the first test of this bike, the Sage, with the full Explorer group. It's going to be in our January issue, but right now we're still, I mean, just still right now, Troy's down in Southern California, still test riding the bike with the RockShox fork and the whole kit with the reverb seat post. <laughs> so it's going to be in our January issue, but you can see it right now on our YouTube channel, Road Bike Action YouTube channel, where we actually did a first ride preview of the bike, and you can see it in action and have Troy go through the whole bike as he did in terms of the suspension for it, the, the reverb dropper post, and the new 1044 cassette. So look for that bike in the pages to come and on YouTube right now. And there's one more bike over here. 
So Dave? this last one over here is actually our original Storm King, or well, it's our Storm King. And it's basically in, uh, you know, it's, this is the original monster gravel bike for us. So we designed this for, you know, the backcountry adventures, the backcountry epics. And these are, these Storm Kings are built one at a time to each individual customer's preference. In um, America? In America, all of our frames are made in USA, of course. Um, so these, we, you know, we make these in-house, of course, and, uh, you know, in Portland and the variety of options that customers can get enables us to really kind of customize and tweak to the individual customer needs. It doesn't change the price. Frame price, for example, on this is 4,300, and it doesn't matter if you're going with production geometry, custom geometry, you're adding on this, that, or the other thing. It's all, you know, it's all covered under there. And then, you know, for this one, obviously being a show and that sort of thing, custom paint job on this and you know Chris King purple all around and little touches and highlights but the beauty of the Storm King and the GP as well uh, is they'll clear up to 700 by 50 millimeter tires um, you know so it really gives you the ability to go a lot farther into other places that you wouldn't normally have gone so here's three beautiful made in America titanium bikes Dave and for the sake of all this stuff called carbon fiber that's out there What's the selling point for someone to think about, understand the benefits of a titanium bike? It's about durability. It's about longevity. Uh, it's This is gonna be a bike that you're gonna have for a very long time. You know, titanium customers typically keep their bikes for at least 20 plus years. Um, it's just, there's no rust. The fatigue resistance is great. Uh, and so as a result, it's a bike that's gonna last. Um, especially with the new gravels, with the way gravels exploded, titanium's the perfect material to be able to use in these types of situations where you have maybe a crash or rocks are pinging off your down tube right. or you're going through water crossings, all the different elements that can grind down other materials. Right. You know, not knocking the other materials, but titanium is particularly well suited for gravel. Yeah. So just, I can't, I can't help but keep going back to the polished frame, which is probably the most beautiful bike of the Sea Otter for me. Um, what, what, what was the upcharge for the polished frame? The polished frame, the upcharge is $2,000. Folks, $2,000 is probably the best spent $2,000 in your life, because that frame, the polished one, the color, I'm a color guy, but boy, the polished frame, it's just absolutely stunning to look at uh, from up close and from far away. So anyways, thanks, Dave. Thanks, Zap. Appreciate it. Welcome to the Sea Otter, everybody, from the Sage Titanium Bike Booth, live. So we are in front of uh, the RB1K Ad1. Uh, the RB1K, since the beginning, is Mario Bicycle. So it's uh, what Mario wants to develop at the moment that he decides to quit with uh, cycling and uh, have a future in his life. So he could have a bicycle from everyone and he decided to build the perfect bicycle for him. So the project born from a, a regular frames and he started to put plastiline yeah. and design, you know, with a, with a knife designing the shape of the bicycle and he brought the, that model to a, an engineer that converted everything in a project actually. He came to our factories because he was sponsored by DMT shoes right. and uh, they decided to create this new frame. It was something crazy for the beginning because they could use it for a time trial. So from there, that was the start of Cipollini, and uh, we did the how long, first... How long ago was that? Uh, 11 years ago. Okay. 11 years okay. ago. Uh, 12, actually. It okay. was a uh, 10, uh, 10 anniversary in 2020, uh, 2019, 11. so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's 11 years. Yeah, okay. So the RB1K had an evolution three years ago, and uh, we had the RB1K Day 1. We want to remember that it was the first bicycle oh, of Mario. Yeah, yeah. This year had a small evolution with the cable routing internal, but we didn't want to do a new disc bicycle on the same, on the same uh, bicycle. So Mario decided to do something. What about if we go really aero? This is a disc brake is, in, is really a bicycle for sprinter. It's a bicycle that gives you more uh, uh, response uh, for the two us uh, is uh, the rigidity of the maximum of rigidity that you can have uh, from a bicycle. So they decide to do something really aero, something really stiff. Right. And uh, our system to produce a frame is really unique because we are the only one that do a complete uh, one frame. We do a frame from one mold only. Right. 
you can see in each, each part of the frame can be carbon because we don't uh, we don't have to put extra resin over the carbon we can show carbon everywhere and it's the uh, one of the best product that you can find on the market when you are looking for a carbon frame yeah. that is really responsive and uh, in this case really um, how can I say aggressive yeah, yeah. it's an aggressive bicycle the geometry is a little bit less aggressive than the first RB1K uh, the first one was a time trial bicycle yeah. actually uh, this one is a little bit less aggressive but at the same time it's more responsive yeah. than the other so just, like, uh, just for, for people who don't know Pietro former pro European rider Giro d'Italia, all the big races, right? Yeah, I finished was, third, eight and nine Giro d'Italia, so, and I, I won the stages. Gonna, I wasn't going to say, but yeah, yeah. So stage winner of the Giro d'Italia, full pole, like real deal guy. So uh, in your own mind, tell tell us what 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 what, what, what would people think about Cipollini, like as a as all the racers you've known, and you've known all these pro racers. So I did a lot of years with Mario in the peloton. Yeah, Mario yeah. was, uh, you know, something I have. <laughs> <laughs> when I talk about Mario, because okay. it was someone that when you were in the peloton, you you have to you you could see him that he was in the peloton first of all. At the second moment, was really charismatic. He was he's the guy that uh, first guy on the peloton that didn't wear the black bib shorts. He wore the bib shorts of the same color of the jersey. He was yeah, the right. first one. He was the first one in the cycling. He was the first one doing some crazy thing with the bicycle doing. A special kit for uh, some of the races. Right, so right. Mario was really a unique person, and he's a, always a unique person right now. It's difficult. There are some days that is, uh, you know, the best friend. Some days you say, "I hate you, I hate you." But he's, this is Mario. This right, is right. Mario Finn since the day one. <laughs> day one. So, so in the history of sprinters, there's been so many, right? Green jersey guys. How would you rate? Cipollini as the hist in the history of like modern day sprinters, really. Um, I think is. The, the best, uh, on my opinion, the, the thing is that uh, because for, you know, he's really tall. Yeah. So it was one of the problems that he can have a sprinter that, that, uh, as tall as him is the aerodynamic. Oh, yeah. If you take Cavendish, if you take Viviani, yeah, yeah. they do the sprint right now over the wheel. They are exactly. like this on the bicycle. So aerodynamic, they can do probably a higher speed than what Mario used to do. They have also better product. They have, uh, if we are thinking right now, uh, the, the, the gear that they use only for time trial, when I was pro, we couldn't think to use 58, uh, 12 or right, 58, right, right. 14. So it's something, uh, the, the evolution of cycling, the evolution of uh, the training that bring to, to have a better sprint. But Mario was, uh, was unique, was a guy that could sprint from 400 meters, he could uh, he could change also his sprint. Sometimes he could do the, when he won the world championship, he did a sprint probably 150 meters because it was uh, something different. Yeah. It was after a long race. Uh, one of his goal when when he had a goal, he he wanted to do it. And uh, if he if, if he, the the moment that he, he realized that he missed his goal, yeah. he could kill the people. <laughs> Close to him, he lost one Sanremo. I remember because there was a small breakaway in the front. He won a Sanremo in, a, in the best year, actually the, the year, the same year that he won also the World Championship. So it's a guy that uh, did a different thing. Not only uh, Cavendish, for example, which is which I, I see this year. I enjoy watching him Tour de France. Uh, I can say that this on his level, on his level. Probably didn't won. He, he didn't do the same result because Mario could win also Gambevel again. Yeah. So Cavendish is a guy that is really a specific sprinter. Mario could do also oh, the yeah, classic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was in the front of Paris Roubaix and other races. So it's a, it's a it's a different. It was more complete also. Right, all also if he was a if he was a sprinter. Yeah. So last question. So for a couple of years now. He's old school, like right, right, you know, Giro d'Italia, everything like that. I'm just a smarmy West Coast guy. Tell, tell the world why disc brakes are better than rim brakes. <laughs> he, this he brake, we are at Sea Otter, we are at Sea Otter. If you are off-road, for sure, disc brake is the, is the only option because you think you can brake, you think you can brake with a regular, uh, with rim brakes, but you can't uh, when you are off-road. When you are on road, you don't want to brake. 
<laughs> this is the last problem of a cyclist. You don't want to break. Interesting theory on how so, disc brakes are not good because you don't want to slow down. That's, that's, <laughs> see, that's the difference between me so, who needs to slow down. No, but there, there, is a real, there is a real problem. When people think about brakes and braking, people think about uh, the rims and, or the disc. But really, what stops a bicycle is a tire. Yeah. is the um, friction between the ground and the tire. Patch, yeah. So until that you have a tire that uh, has a three millimeter on the ground or four millimeters, this is always your limit. You can stop the wheels, but at the end what stops you is the, yeah, is yeah. the friction. So you need to, to know how to use also this brake. I, I understand this much better, the brakes. I, I was using one of our demo yesterday in trying the, the new brakes from, from Shimano, actually, which, which is, is really is ni nice, smooth. But uh, who wants to brake? Who wants to brake? <laughs> a, a road rider doesn't ask to the sprinter, actually, if they want to brake. Yeah, the yeah. sprinter wants the disc brake for the true hustle, which is a... For the throw one, axle, right? Yeah, right. So it's I, something really It's really interesting. That's what he was saying to me yesterday, that the sprinters actually, the disc brakes, they're fine. But what they really, really want is, is the, the stiffness axle. of the front end that comes from a through axle, which it is... It makes a lot of difference yeah, on, yeah. The, on, on downhill, on the sprint, because right. you transfer more power to the to the ground, which is a, one amazing thing. Is is a step, really, is the real step above on the... On, on the on the change of the bicycle right, for the right, disc right. brake because actually you know that I can see also for safety for people that want to ride in the rain or it happens you have a long ride and it start to rain disc is right. much better than right. uh, than uh, than rim brakes but the problem will be always the with rim brakes and rain you don't brake so right, right. <laughs> you you try to brake but it doesn't brake right right last question the most important question if you're going to tell someone to come to you and says i have one place to go in italy all of italy for a vacation my honeymoon whatever what's the one place in all of italy people should go to to visit like that just speaks Italy the best. So my heart is in Verona. <laughs> ah, Verona, bravo. Verona, Verona is my is my hometown. Is Verona is my town. I can if you are if you are a cyclist, you are in the flat. Is plain, but you have uh, in uh, probably 30 minutes you yeah, can yeah. start a climb that go up to uh, 5,000 uh, feet or 5,500 feet. You are like one hour thirty from the Dolomites. Yeah. You can go in two hours to Florence. Verona is my is, is my town. Ju Romeo and Juliet town is a world championship. Yeah, world championship. There was two that was actually. Good. Yeah, yeah. That, it's one of the most beautiful town because it's really historic. It's close to the Garda Lake, which is really nice for tourism, and uh, it's amazing for a cyclist. He can go. Uh, on the flat, you can go on the hills, you can go on the mountain. You can really enjoy. You can really enjoy uh, Italy. Yeah, the yeah. food is special. It's different from south of Italy. Oh, yeah. I love to go in, in holidays also in south of Italy, but uh, it's a different kind of food. Yeah. It's different. What people think about Italy sometimes? Uh, Italy is small compared to the United States, but you have. Uh, a fusion of uh, language. Our dialect, every town has a different yeah, dialect. Yeah, yeah. Every town has different speciality for food, for uh, they live in different way. Yeah. Times uh, to wake up and times to go to work is different from north, north and south. So I grew up in Verona and yeah. I, one day I will go back to Verona. Very good. I love America, by the way. There you go. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.